On July 22, 2019, the Metropolitan Museum of Art at the Cloisters unveiled a small exhibition, The Coma Treasure, a Medieval Jewish Legacy. The Met Cloisters is the branch of the museum devoted to the art and architecture of medieval Europe. It's my very strong feeling that the Cloisters is the public face in the United States of the medieval world. Our architecture makes it pretty clear that we're going to be talking about castles and kings and monks, right? Because we're somewhere between a monastery, looking like a monastery and looking like a castle. Colmar is a small town located in the north of France, not far from the German border. In 1863, a small group of treasure was discovered inside a hotel wall. The jewelry was dated back to the 13th and 14th century. It belonged to a Jewish family who never came to collect it. This particular treasure has been linked always to the Black Death, right? And it, the exhibitions have been called Treasures of the Black Death. The Colma treasure from the Musée de Cluny, Paris, is now displayed alongside select works from the Met Cloisters and other organizations. The most significant piece of jewelry is a golden Jewish ceremonial ring, which was only worn at the wedding ceremony. The golden hexagon on the ring represents the lost temple in Jerusalem. The Hebrew letters on it spell Mazel Tov, meaning congratulations. The belt was also for the wedding ceremony. Colma's record shows around the 1340s there was a lively Jewish community living side by side with its Christian neighbors before the Black Death hit Europe. The plague killed 30 to 60 percent of the population. Facing an unknown cause of death, Everyone panicked. The church pointed the finger at the Jewish community. What our records show is that there probably was a mass um, burning. In December 1348, a Jewish man, while being tortured, falsely confessed to the poisoning of the town's water supply. And in early 1349, the Jews of Colmar were put to death. Many were burnt alive. And this wasn't just in Colmar, this occurred on other cities along the Rhine in the same region, and also there are examples in Italy, and there are examples in Belgium of that same phenomenon occurring. This prayer book from the Met Cloister shows three elegant men on horseback, unexpectedly encountering their own images in death. The owner of the book, Bonn of Luxembourg, was the sister of the Holy Roman Emperor who died in 1349 of the Black Death Plague. We included that to really emphasize how pervasive the impact of the plague was. This black onyx ring was rare then. This hands and faith paradin ring was probably for mourning. A book written in Hebrew around 1290 asserts that if a person wants to talk to his dead friend in his dreams, he should put on an onyx ring. We have some coins right behind you there. Uh, those are the coins that were found with the treasure. There were around 300 of them. And actually, at this time, the monetary circumstances were still quite complex. Throughout history, Comer has been a wine city. Different types of coins were used for trade with different regions. combination with an ivory plaque, like the one that you see from our collection. Now the back is plain. The surface is slightly carved in so that it's indented. They would have put a thin layer of wax there, and then you use the silver tip to write notes. It's a kind of junior high meets texting in the 14th century. The Jewish population along the Rhineland, some of them, quite a few of them, came into the Rhineland uh, in the early 14th century when they were kicked out of the Kingdom of France, and they became involved with the translation of romances, romance stories, from French into German. The inscriptions on this jewel box attest to the cultural obsession with romantic notions. A long time, for decades, uh, we thought that this treasure was the only evidence 
of the Jewish community of Omar. Uh, but quite recently, a wonderful scholar called Judith Codell in France, that she's been studying Christian printed books, which on their inside pages have as their end papers bits and pieces of 14th century Hebrew men. Now, how does that happen? After the Jewish community hill in Omar, their property remains. And so their books pass to the local religious institutions, and they use the end papers from those earlier Hebrew manuscripts to form the end papers of their books. And the library in Omar was kind enough to lend us this one, which is the only one with a fully illuminated page from the early 14th century. So. For over 600 years, Homer treasure was hidden inside the walls and bearing witness to a once lively Christian and Jewish community that lived side by side. This exhibition reminds us of the painful tragedy of the Dark Ages and the progress we have made by showing this Jewish treasure at the Met Cloisters today.